Hi, welcome to Distinti's rule number five. Uh, this is Science is Broken, and the solution I'm going to propose is the No Bull Prize. So how is science broken? Well, science is plagued by incentives that encourage misbehavior in the scientific community. And it's not everybody, but it's a good enough portion that we can have hinder science and hinder human advancement. So what are the bad incentives? Number one, a lot of times jobs, whether they be university positions or so, well, they, they put your promotion, uh, they relate to how many papers you produce. So you have to produce a certain amount of papers to get tenure or keep your position or to advance to the next position, something like that. Um, and so this has unintended consequences, uh, which we will cover in a moment. And this, I'm using scrolls here to represent research papers because I really couldn't find another, uh, not, not trying to be mean, I just that's the one I found. The other bad incentive is that government agencies and benefactors offer grant money to new research. And part of the criteria for selection is the number of publications made uh, by the applicant previously. So if you've got a lot of publications, they think you're smart and they're going to give you more money, or more likely to give you money. And this leads to, you know, other bad behavior. And let me give you an example. Suppose you're a scientist who spent years and millions of dollars in grant money only to discover that the last of your ten experiments does not agree with your new shiny theory, what do you do? Well, the honorable thing to do would be, because it only takes one wrong experiment to prove a theory wrong, then you should abandon the work and then apologize to the benefactor and try to explain that their money was not wasted. While at the same time, you have to ask for more money because you got to do something else now. Um, and meanwhile, your other colleagues are being promoted and getting new funding because their papers are successes. So, what do you have incentive to do? Well, you ignore, downplay, and omit the, and omit the counterfactual experiment and publish the paper as if the theory is valid. <coughs> Global warming. Um, why? Because no one's going to check. Journal reviewers only perform superficial checks. They don't have budgets to repeat your experiments and to try maybe other experiments you haven't tried. Okay, and job promotions are not based on how many research papers that you disprove, so there's no incentive for anybody to look at your paper and, and disprove it because there's no, nothing linked to job performance or grant receiving. And again, grants, research grants are not given to disprove existing works. So it's not in the best interest of scientists to challenge a colleague's work uh, because there's no promotion or grant money in debunking other guys' work. And worse, because you're you're, you're interfering with the other guy's ability to promote and get future funding, you're going to get backlash. You'll be ostracized like a whistleblower. And the result is junk science gets piled higher and deeper in the, 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 the humorous expression of what's a PhD stand for is piled higher and deeper. And so we get junk science being produced by the truckload. And this is why anthropomorphic global warming theory is never challenged within the rank of environmental scientists because they get great globs of money to research solutions to it. Okay, all end of the world theories get substantial funding. That's why, you, well, we'll go over some. And it's not in their best interest to show that it's wrong, because why kill the goose that laid the golden egg? And it's sad because the anthropomorphic global warming theory can be disproven with simple logic and math that an elementary school kid can do. And because of this junk science, keep on walking, there'll never be a cure for cancer. There's no incentive to cure cancer. Keep on walking. We're still, we, because of junk science, we still send astronauts into space using fireworks that were pioneered by the Chinese uh, thousands of years ago. Because of junk science, E equals MC squared states that there's abundant energy to satisfy all mankind's wants and desires beyond his imagination. But guess what? Because relativity is junk science, it gives no way to harness this energy. And you say, well, what about nuclear? Well, that's not relativity. Nuclear energy is quantum mechanics and all that stuff. It's not relativity. And that's why we're still murdering each other over oil. If we could get, if this were a true thing that relativity uh, explains how this could occur, we should have a way to get the energy out and be able to do all this stuff and not murder each other over oil anymore. All right, and because of junk science, governments hemorrhage cash to fight threats to humanity that just don't exist. And, you know, we had killer bees, the next ice age in the 70s when I was a kid, glacier melting. They've been bemoaning glaciers for thousands, for hundreds of years. Uh, they did all kinds of studies about comic books in the 50s and had a comic book rating system which only made comic books darker. 
Uh, then we had the war on alcohol in the 30s, and we had witch hunting in the 1600s, yada, 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 yada. And people believe what people tell them. And that's why we always strangle with this junk science. So it's in scientists' best interest to repackage their research in terms of a major threat to humanity or the world. That way they'll obtain a windfall of funding. And what's another myth of science? That scientists are smart, they would never allow a theoretical flaw to persist. Well, let's suppose that you're a scientist that runs an experiment that contradicts relativity. What would you do? What are the three possible outcomes in that case? Well, 90% of the time, that person that runs that experiment is going to assume that they made a mistake because obviously no one's ever, ever shown anything counterfactual to relativity. So relativity must be irrefutable. Well, and then they, what they do then is they just go on to other things because they have to support their jobs and future funding. And they'll probably never return to this. And say, how come is science grinds to a halt? Outcome number two. After months of second guessing, the scientist realizes that the flaw in relativity is true but realizes that there's no benefit in proving relativity wrong. I mean, you don't gain anything. You don't get a Nobel Prize for proving relativity wrong. And the backlash is going to be substantial because there's too many idiots out there. They have no ability to think outside of what they're told in school. And they will just going to dismiss you out of hand outright and probably blacklist you and never allow your paper published. It doesn't matter how good your argument is. There's some people that won't listen to you no matter how good your argument is. Uh, and since a great bulk of paper use relativity as a foundation, in other words, their deltas, are standing on the shoulders of giants is the expression, disproving relativity will negatively impact the bulk of your colleagues' papers. And you're going to put their future jobs and their future research grants in jeopardy. And the backlash you're going to receive is stunning. So you're, re you're gonna just going to drop the research because it's better for your career to publish garbage that sports relativity than to try to waste your time disproving it when you will receive nothing in benefit except a heartburn and backlash. It's all you're going to get. And again, science grinds to a halt. Outcome number three. One percent of the people are going to hold on to it and try to secretly develop an alternative. But your chance of success giving no funding, no facilities, no time, and no ability to collaborate is probably one part per million. Worse, because no one else will publish counterfactual data for all the previous reasons, it appears that you're alone. When in fact, I'm sure there's lots of people that have stumbled into stuff of relativity and either didn't know it or weren't willing to publish it because they didn't want the backlash. And so you are discouraged. And, and the, this course of action seems impossible. Okay, but uh, essentially, the structure of incentives, when money talks, the truth walks. And where it gets worse because there's academic theft. Because new ideas are far and few between. There's rampant theft among academics. It's happened to me and my relatives. An example for the race for DNA, Watson and Crick looked at Rosalind Franklin's data without her permission and used that to finalize their idea and publish. And they didn't give her credit in the beginning. Eventually, they were forced to give her credit. And I expect ethereal mechanics, once it starts getting, uh, gaining foundation, people are going to be writing papers saying they invented all the parts of it long before I did. And this hinders collaboration. Then there's scientific repression. Lord Kelvin said back before the Wright brothers, heavier than air flight machines are impossible. And Lord Kelvin was as famous as Albert Einstein in his day. So if Lord as Kelvin says so, it must be true. So no one bothered dealing in heavier than air. Because Lord Kelvin said, Kelvin said it was impossible. But it took two outsiders, two bicycle mechanics, that did what was considered impossible among all the smart scientists. And guess what? The Wright brothers' theory of flight was in violation of the accepted laws of physics. And there's legend out there that they were denied a patent for five years uh, until they, the Congress changed the law. I couldn't verify that, so I don't know about that part but they violated the accepted laws of physics. So while scientists are producing mountains of garbage that agree with other garbage, outsiders are making the important breakthroughs. Engineers have been ignoring Maxwell's equations for years in order to produce radar and cell phone advances. Alexander Graham Bell invented the telephone while the government was funding telegraph research. The Wright brothers developed flight while the government was funding a scientist who field while other scientists said were sure it was an impossibility. Albert Einstein produced relativity on his own dime while working at the patent office. He was working outside the broken system of incentives. So how can we fix science? 
Well, we need to start offering funding, grants, prizes, to incentivize the disproving of models and theories. Because the quicker we can get through the mounds of bullshit junk science, the quicker we can get to the cures for cancer, the ability to push people into space without using Roman candles, and all of the other great things that have been promised in all the science fiction shows since I was a kid in, in the 70s. Okay, but with the current system, all we are is churning junk upon junk upon garbage. And these scientists have the nerve to call all the other people out there trying to make advances crackpots. <laughs> Give me a break. Well, this is the logo I came up with, but the, this one is from uh, EntropyZone.com. I like that for the logo for the Nobel Prize. And the Nobel Prize is going to compete with the Nobel Prize. Okay, there are mountains of junk science out there. Uh, and all of these things can be disproven quite easily. And the reason why no one's done it before, there's no incentive to disprove it. It's easier just to produce a paper based on it and get a pat on the back and some kind of cash prize for that. And uh, this is rule of acquisition number 28. Lactose intolerance. Blind commitment to an theory is not an intellectual virtue, it's an intellectual crime. Emir Lakatos. And the other thing he said is we should not think that a theory is ultimately true, only that it has no counterexample has been found yet. Oh, I kind of spoke that wrong, but you get the idea. Engineers actually have a better incentive system. If engineers screw stuff up, people die. So engineers have an incentive to do rigorous testing. However, they still don't have unlimited budgets or unlimited time. So you're never going to see uh, rigorous testing on anything. You've got limits for budget and you've got limits for time. And you have limits for ideas because people may not be able to think of all the possible ways something could fail. Okay, it's limited brains, let's put it that way. All right, so let's do a wrap up. The broken incentive system le leads to production of junk science, persistence of junk science, academic theft, academic repression, fraud, taking public funds, support knowingly bogus science, <coughs> global warming. Okay, uh, usually it's outsiders usually break the scientific log jams because they're not within the bad incentives of the scientific community. And so, you know, even though scientific method is a wonderful thing, it is not all rainbows and lollipops. It suffers from human faults, limited budgets, limited human intelligence. Okay, so uh, I thank you all for watching my videos. I read all your comments. I thank you all for all your comments. And I, when new people subscribe, I go to your website to try to see, or your, your, uh, your YouTube channel, whatever, to see uh, what your interests are so I can hopefully make the videos uh, better. Um, if you could go to my website and donate, I'd really appreciate. Uh, the other thing if you could do is subscribe because that will give you when the new videos come out. Um, but important if you could do this for me is just sit through the commercials. I don't know if I get better money, but that's one way I'm trying to fund this because I am outside the scientific uh, system here, the incentive system. Uh, I'm doing this completely on my own dime. Thank you.